You can have the prettiest looking thing on a piece of paper, but if you can't make it, it, it does no good. Our goal is to be the best possible partner for the customer. And so we're looking to provide whatever solution they need. And at the end of the day, they, they want it just to be turnkey. They want to be able to come in, do their job, walk off, and not have to be called back for warranty, for claims. You always have to keep be thinking, how can I make this better, faster, cheaper? If we can produce it cheaper, we can pass that savings along to the customer. We're Stock MHS. MHS stands for Material Handling Systems. Stock is not stock because it's always custom. If you walk into an Amazon and you see you, you know, it's a million square foot facility, we've got to get boxes from this side of the plant to that side of plants, that's where we do. Yeah, we service the integrators. We try to help them out when they need uh, various components fabricated throughout a facility. Basically, the integrators bid the job for the end user, which would be the Amazon or the FedEx in this case, and then they um, source out to the experts on building the equipment. We would basically build the chutes, the conveyor, the components that drive the conveyor, and then really at the end of the day, what we do best is we help them find solutions to the problem. We are the experts in our industry and we have to give our customer that experience. But to be the experts in this industry, you have to have a little bit of engineering expertise, you have to have production expertise, you have to have a deliverable expertise. Um, quality is always going to be our number one. I'm a sourcing guy, right? And look, anybody can give me the best price for something, okay? Anybody can go fabricate a piece of metal, okay? It's that service and the value package. In sourcing, what I realized over the years, most of your cost savings is never in negotiation because price of material is the price of material, plus of labor, plus of labor. What I'm looking for to do, and I think stock does well, I, I want stock to continue, give us ideas on how can we do things better. We need people who are gonna innovate. We need people who wanna change things sometimes. So we're a family-owned business. We've been in business since 1974. Uh, my father was one of the original founders with uh, his, his older brother. They got a loan from grandma, started in a garage. And that's kind of the attitude we've always brought to the business, is we want a family-type atmosphere. Our business only works because of the employees that we have, and they're the core of what makes us great. We've got to make sure that we've got enough employees here that can do what they need to do and that they have the right training and that, honestly, that they want to come to work every day. There's many things that they do here to make it a fun place to work and uh, I think it builds a good rapport. We want to make sure we're communicating with our employees about what that workload looks like, you know, what are the things that we can do to help, making sure that we take all the roadblocks out of their way so that they can just come in and do their job. The people that we have, they're always looking to go above and beyond. They want what's best for the customer and they want what's best for the company because we believe that it's a win-win relationship. That's the only way partnerships work. The, the values that are instilled through the core values you see posted all over the building and everybody can recite, um, those are important to me. I, I live and breathe those every day. I want them to work hard, but I also want them to enjoy what they're doing. And if they're not doing that, then I'm not doing my job. We're here in our Westchester fabrication facility. We have four facilities. Um, we basically have the same a type of equipment in all facilities, so our capacity is, is pretty broad. We have everything from uh, your brake systems, laser systems. Raw sheet comes in, gets processed on the laser. We'll cut out a flat pattern. So we have fiber lasers, we have O2 lasers. Etching, we also etch our parts with uh, the customer's PO number, their part number, um, the area in which that product lives in the site. That way when they're sorting, I mean, they can instantly pick it up, see where, what it is, where it goes, stage it in that area. And then it moves over to the brick press department where we form it into all kinds of different shapes. Then it will go on to typically the welding department, weld it all together. We have certified welders when there's certification welding required, but most of our customers are D1.1, which is pretty standard. Most of what we do also goes to our powder paint facility down the road. And then at that point, sometimes there's assembly involved with that as well. That's the whole system as we go. And then we ship it in modular so that they can install it in the field. Yeah, so we're a total turnkey solution for our customers. The, the company itself needs to run safely. You're either going to pay on the front end to have programs, have persons like myself organizing training and safety, 
or you're gonna pay on the back end because you're not doing it and you have a wealth of injuries. What I also need is engineering resources. Yeah, engineering is extremely important to, to the service we provide. A lot of times it can either make or break a project, both in the design aspect and making sure the design's good, but it's also the blueprints that you put to the shop. If it's good blueprints, very clear, you can really streamline the process, eliminate the possibility of mistakes, and get the customer what they want on the day that they want. I think why this relationship really kicked off is stock ability to work directly with our engineering. How can we simplify design, make it nice and simple so it's easy to manufacture, easier to handle, right? We try to design their shoots so that they are manageable in the field, manageable for us to ship. When you go on site, a lot of times, Innovation happens during installation. I'll give you a great example. Why do the designs change? Well, hey, we got into the building, started to install. Fire inspector comes out, says, oh man, you got to put the fire sprinkler here. Seems easy enough, right? Fire now you got to change your columns. Now you got to change the way your system is. Typically, they can't go pull something out of a catalog and get the parcel from A to B um, because of the building layout. And it's constantly changing in the project. So we have the ability to adapt because we had the experience and we've seen a lot of different variations of this. So when our customers come to us, we've probably already done that similar thing with another client. When things go wrong, which they do, sometimes they go wrong on a daily basis because that's just the nature of our business. This is where we need that flexibility and, and the right attitude means I know I can rely on stock to make it right. And then the two ways that you really tackle that change process is with the, the knowledge that we bring to the table and then also the attitude that we bring. We'll always have a great accepting attitude towards change. So basically what is new to you, we've already seen. And that's the benefit of working with us. And really, we're all about how do we overcome the obstacles to get the solution we need, to get through that change and really make it as painless as possible. That's humanly possible that we can do internally to make sure that our parts arrive to them on time. I mean, that's, that's ultimately the goal is for them to have a flawless install, everything to work perfectly. And if we can get that, you know, nailed down, then we're their easy button and... I believe in op open lines of communication, trust. At the pace that, that these things go, the integrators don't always have time to have 100% detailed layouts of exactly what they want. So knowing from past experience, this piece goes here, this piece goes here, you know, what jives well with everything else, uh, we're able to tell them that's really not what you want right here. You want this guy. So we have big parts, big quality. We do first, middle, last part inspections to try to ensure the quality. And then after that's completed, everything's brought up here and staged in front of the QC department. And then our actual quality inspectors, they double check everything as well per the print. Right before you turned on the camera, Glenn here was inspecting this particular part and we noticed that we didn't get a good weld right here between these two joints. So when we run into an issue like this, we'll actually write up a non-conformance. We'll do an internal reject where we can track the number of rejects we have, keep track of rework costs. This will go back out in the shop and be repaired. Computer simulations quite often are relied heavily upon to produce our parts. However, we have found that prototyping them out physically building them, putting them in our shop, testing them uh, to ensure that everything bolts up. Because not everything translates from CAD to the real world as you would think it would. We did travel to Atlanta to reverse engineer a piece that the customer needed. They were having trouble sourcing and, um, and designed it and built one in-house, you know, so we would have it, be able to touch it, feel it. Some of our integrators and users have a book of standards. Not every situation do the standards work. Um, you may have the standard that, that fits the footprint, but it may need a taller inner wall or, you know, a, a, different, a different top for some spill protection or, you know, a slightly different drop. So yeah, it's a standard spiral, but I need you to tweak it by four inches. So the adaptable standard is another reason stock is not stock because it's always custom. This is our UHMW shoot. When you need the ultimate slick surface, you're turning to UHMW. UHMW is an alternate to steel. It's really useful when you are conveying magnets. The coefficient of friction is a lot lower than metal. 
uh, in some cases 25%. Especially when you have applications that fall under 20 and a half degrees slope. And that's why we bring you the patented Easy Flow system. This is our plug and play modular expandable system. It was originally designed kind of like a Lego set. We make columns, we'll be able to make these arms, and depending on how high you want to go, you just keep on adding these columns. That doesn't have to require a lot of engineering because a lot of it's already kind of pre-configured. You're just adding your Lego sets. So the end goal here at Stock MHS is to help our integrators. The good thing about Stock is we build all of it. Cutting edge, innovative, top of technology, forefront of uh, robotics. As you choose a supplier, what you want to look for is somebody that can help you create value in the process. Whether that value comes between your innovation, your problem solving, your no knowledge of the industry. There's nothing stock about stock because we build custom. You gotta love it. 